here, let's download image filters.java. So I'm just going to click download again. And here it is. And I'm just going to open it. I'm going to copy everything right here. Let's just do control A, control C. Let's go inside NetBeans and create a new project. Let's call it image filters. And we just want to replace everything in here with what we just copied. Okay. So let's save it and click run. And I've made this program for you so that you can already load an image very easily. You can just search through your files, find something. And we can even resize this. And we can scroll down if it's a big image. You can see the whole thing. Uh, so right now, there are five buttons here. One says invert colors, another says grayscale, step colors, emboss image, and blur image. If we try to invert right now, nothing happens. Same thing with grayscale and step colors, emboss image, blur image. They don't do anything yet. But in this video, we're going to program the functionality for this first button, the one that says invert colors. So let's go back to NetBeans. And if we look through the code here I've written, I've got five functions here that don't have any code in them, or they have a tiny one line of code just to help you get started. So for invert colors, go where it says your code here. If you're wondering what it means to invert the colors of an image, it means you're getting the negative of the image. So here's an example. This is an image, and then this is the inverse or the negative of that image. In order to do this, you have to understand a little bit about how pixels work. So let's go back to the assignment description. And right here I have an FYI. In digital graphics, the color of a pixel is actually made up of varying amounts of three different colors, red, green, and blue. These values are represented by integer amounts, where zero means none of that color, and 255 is the maximum value, meaning 100% of that color. So the color red would be expressed as 255, 0, 0, because it contains no green and no blue. All right, so with that understanding, we can go down a little bit further, and we can see the algorithm to invert the colors of an image. All we have to do is, for each pixel, change the red, green, and blue values to be how far away they are from 255. For example, if the pixel has the values 200, 255, and 25, its negative or inverse would be 55, because 200 is 55 away from 255, 0, because obviously 255 is 0 away from 255, and 230, because 25 is 230 away from 255. So let's do that. Let's think of the image as a grid, because that's what it is. It's a grid of pixels where there's a specific width or number of pixels wide and a specific height or number of pixels tall. So let's create a for loop to iterate over all the rows in this image. So I've created a buffered image called image pixels that you can use to access specific pixels on the image. So we're going to say get the height of this image and we're going to use a variable i to iterate over each row for how tall this image is. And then make another iterator, call it j, because we don't want to interfere with the i iterator. And this one is going to iterate over every column on each row. So let's say while j is less than image pixels.getWidth and increase j by one every time. Okay, so I've created some functionality to make it pretty easy for you to change these values. I've created something called a class and I've named it the pixel class. So if you create a pixel and set it equal to whatever this function returns called getPixel, and we have to pass in an x value and a y value. So these are the coordinates of a specific pixel. And remember, we're trying to go over every single pixel on this image. 
So just going through it one by one. That's why we have i and j, so that we can say, hmm, our x value is what current column we're on, which is j, and our y value is what current row we're on, which is i, and then we have to pass in image pixels, which is the buffered image. Okay, so now we can access the red, the green, and the blue values from that pixel object called p. We could say p dot get red value, get green value, get blue value. Anyway, so what we really want to do is get new values for each of those colors. So let's say int red value, and it's going to be the difference between 255 and its current value. So let's just set it equal to 255 minus p dot get red value. Let's do the same thing for green and the same thing for blue. All right. So now there's only one more function we have to call for this specific pixel. We can say p dot set RGB. And of course, we want to pass in the red value, the green value, and the blue value. So it shouldn't be j, it should be red value green value, and blue value. Okay, and that's all I have to do. So let's save that. Let's close this current one and rerun it. So I'm actually going to have to reload the image. Okay, so let's try inverting the colors. And it looks like it works. So that is the negative of this image. The cool thing is, you can actually run that exact same algorithm and get your original image back. Because the inverse of the inverse is the original. All right. So three of these buttons here you're going to have to implement, and then the fourth one, to blur an image, will be extra credit. And I have the algorithms for all of them right here. So some of them are a little bit more involved than others, but you should be able to do them. Of course, if you have questions, just let me know. I'll be glad to help.